You're watching Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV in St. Andrews. And now, here's two guys whose favorite band growing up was Guy Lombardo and the Royal Canadians, Evan and Joe. I'm Joe Tykotsky down here in New Haven, Connecticut. I'm Evan McFarland here in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. And this is episode 30 of Mick and T Sports Report. And it's the last of our 16 episodes that we did in the calendar year 2021. Cranked them out. Crazy, crazy. That's so much. And as Mark mentioned in the opening, our favorite band growing up was Guy Lombardo and the Royal Canadians. Uh, that's yeah, probably, you got me. <laughs> yeah, they're the, they're the ones that do Old Lang Syne on New Year's Eve. Or that's okay. the song. They're not around yep. anymore. <laughs> but uh, before we get rolling on our end of the year episode, let's uh, do a quick toast of our special eggnog. There you go, man. Uh, 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 uh. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. That's good. Good stuff. Oh, that's really good stuff. Um, and since this is our last show of 2021, you could say you got the Christmas lights dangling there. We wanted to update you on how a couple of our past guests are doing. Uh, Lisa Tomitis, the former coach of the Canadian Olympic women's basketball team, has her University of Saskatchewan team off to an 8-0 start and number one ranking in Canada West. Um, and then after playing basketball professionally for five years in Italy and graduating from Yale, our friend Brandon Sherrod started the season in Finland but is now playing in Israel. He is a man on the move. Traveling, and man. Yep. And lastly, and the big one, our uh, buddy Mark Nichols, who we interviewed and his team Gashu won the Canadian men's curling championship. So they represent Canada at the Winter Olympics in, in Beijing in uh, February. And he looks to follow up on the gold medal from 16 years ago, which is a pretty amazing accomplishment. Yeah, we're hoping we can add another gold here. Uh, Joe, there is one more thing that's going on, maybe not as happy, but our, our buddy Nav actually missed his first Raptors home game that uh, people were allowed in attendance last week. So unfortunately for him, he I'm sure he was pretty upset about that. Yeah, the streak is over. I watched that documentary on him. It was uh, pretty, pretty amazing. But yeah. hopefully he'll, he'll be back soon. And for those of you that missed it on either side of the border in um, – the CFL's Grey Cup, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with an overtime win against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Roll it back, repeat. There you go, two in a row. All right, let's uh, music spotlight. We'll go very quickly, and we'll I'll I'll give mine up to you this time. Sure. Anybody who knows me knows I am not a Christmas music fan at all. Like I absolutely detest it. I think it's something that my mom scared me with from a young age. But uh, check out This Is Christmas by Ron Sexsmith. We'll, we'll give out a Christmas song just due to the time of year. But uh, it's a cool little cool little tune. It's, I find it's more about the guitar than it is the Christmas music. There you go. Here it is. Ron Sexsmith and Maybe This Christmas. St. Catharines, Ontario. Maybe this Christmas will mean something more. Maybe this year. Love will appear deeper than ever before, and maybe forget. There we go, Ron Sexsmith, and maybe just, this Christmas. Anything with Christmas jingles to it just gives me flashbacks of mom cranking music at like seven in the morning on a Saturday when I was growing up, <laughs> starting like the end of November. <laughs> that did not happen in my household. <laughs> oh, that, that's fair. <laughs> Uh, coming up next, we have a great interview with a player from Canada's gold medal winning Olympic women's soccer team. You're watching Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. Welcome back to Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV. Our first guest was the second youngest member of the Canadian Olympic women's soccer team, which captivated the country back in August by winning the gold medal at the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. From Pickering, Ontario, just outside of Toronto, but joining us today 
from the campus of the University of Michigan in lovely Ann Arbor. Let's welcome in Jade Revere to the show. <laughs> welcome in there, Jade. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Sure thing. All right. We got a ton of questions, so let's get rolling. Uh, you beat the United States in the Olympic semifinals. Then you had to wait a couple days before playing Sweden in the gold medal game. How tough is it as a player to have to, to be so high after that win over the U.S. and then have to sort of stay focused for another couple days till the finals? Yeah, um, it was definitely, I mean, for me, it was one of the best moments in Canadian soccer history just because we have this long, long, long rivalry with the U.S. and to beat them, um, it was like amazing. Um, it was bittersweet for me because that was my game that I had to sit out because I did get a second yellow card. Um, but I mean, the emotions are high, obviously, after the game, like you said. Um, but I think because we had such amazing veterans on our team, you know, this is not their first rodeo at something like this. So they know how easily it is to fall into the trap of like getting caught up in such a big win and not focusing on the second game. But our team is actually really good at, you know, um, putting things in the past and moving forward. And I think our coach um, Bev really helps with that. Um, so yeah, we did have a lot of um, fun celebrating together. Um, but like right when the next day, you know, begun, um, it was a whole new day. So we, we focused on the next team ahead, which was Sweden. Yeah, I was a little torn because being from the U.S., I was sort of cheering for the U.S., but I said, if Canada wins, we could probably get someone on the team as a guest on the show. <laughs> I wasn't that upset that you guys, uh, that you guys won. But, uh, <laughs> Evan, you have a question for Jade? Yeah, that, that was a really cool perspective of that, Jade. I don't think a lot of people realize how hard it is to come down off such a high like that. But Another thing that if you watch that you had to adapt to is we realized there is little to no fans allowed at all at the Olympic soccer games due to COVID. So how tough was it for you and your teammates to not have your friends, family, parents, and even other Canadian fans there? Yeah, um, it was definitely tough just because, um, you know, we're so used to having such a great Canadian fan base, you know, kind of follow and be around. Um, we kind of knew the expectation of it going in, like um, preparing for the Olympics. Like there also wasn't very much fans there also due to COVID. Um, I think for me personally, it was just upsetting because the Olympics that was supposed to happen the year before, like my parents had already booked, you know, the hotel room. They already knew where they were going in Japan. So everything was set. And then once it kind of got postponed, it was, um, kind of devastating especially since I'm an only child um and I don't have any siblings so my mom and dad are you know my biggest fans my biggest critics um for them not being there you know it's like it's tough could not seeing them but I mean like I said everyone has um like a, a lot of family members that usually come to the game so I think not seeing them was kind of upsetting obviously but it was just you know the reality that we lived in um we didn't want it to impact our team so I think as a culture together we kind of like all came together and you know was each other's backbone during that um the long duration that the Olympics was um and not to mention like the Canadian fan base was still there like regardless if they weren't there physically um you know through social media it was just amazing how many people just you know focused on women's soccer um Canadian women's soccer to be specific it was just amazing and especially to know that the finals was like one of the most viewed games in like Olympic history for Canadians especially like that was just amazing so regardless if they weren't there physically like we knew they were there physically and emotionally for us um and yeah it was great to you know have that turnout great well great answer um I find this a little bit crazy but you told me before the interview that you only had one full day at home after coming back to the Olympics, before having to report to Michigan for your preseason college, how, right. how tough was it to go back to college that soon after winning the gold medal? Um, I don't know if tough would be the word I use. Um, I think, you know, it was 
it was very quick, I would say, that everything kind of turned around. So I don't think there was enough time to really have any emotions set in. Um, I think when I came off the plane, it was like, I don't know, maybe seven, eight at night. Um, and I'm like in the car with my dad. I'm like excited just to be home. I haven't seen them in a while. And then my dad tells me to get out the car. And I'm like, why are we getting out the car? Can I just like pull up to the driveway so I can get it? I was so confused. And then I see my uncle and he's like outside the car with like a video camera and he's like videotaping me. I'm like, guys, it's like eight o'clock at night. Like what is happening? And then I start like walking down my street and there's just like a bunch of people, neighbors, kids, moms, dads, grandmas, aunts, people who I didn't even know lived on the street that were just lined up, just clapping, like waving, like having huge posters and stuff. And it was kind of like a celebration. And it was amazing just because like the people of the neighborhood who like some who just moved in, some who, you know, have been there for a while, all kind of came together just to celebrate, you know, the gold medal. And um, that night was special to me. So I think that kind of helped with, you know, only having a day at home, you feel so loved and you feel appreciated. And, you know, you feel like the medal was worth more than just the team. It was, it was, it impacted everybody. So although I did get like one day, like it was definitely, um, uh, you know, memorable day. Um, I got to spend the next day with just my family, um, go around and see some of my um, cousins and stuff that I haven't seen, you know, in years. Um, and then, yeah, the next day was fly out to Ann Arbor. And then I got the same celebration here with my teammates, which was amazing too. Um, I got to, you know, take pictures of them. They, even though they're Americans, you know, they still have that that love for um, Canada winning the Olympics. So it was just amazing. It was two full days of just fun celebration and, you know, being able to celebrate with the people that are close to me. That's amazing. Um, I'm going to pop up a couple pictures here that I found online. First is a little four-year-old <laughs> Jade Revere. Um, from your early day, you started at age four. Is that correct? I started at age three. Three. Good God. Mm -hmm. Um, and here's a little celebration picture. Um, is that you on the left? Yeah. Getting ready to dive on. Uh, was that, do you know if that was that after the semis or the, the gold medal game? That's not the semis. This might have been the gold medal game. I think so. I'm not sure who we're dogpiling on. Um, Let me get out of the <laughs> Uh, get out. let me try to get out the other way there you go yeah okay so this would be the finals oh that was um, after julia's winning kick huh yeah yeah the semis i would have i wouldn't been dressed and i lost a shoe from celebrating so i have one shoe on <laughs> and one off <laughs> uh and then i was gonna ask where's where's your gold medal now um, so my gold medal, it's not with me currently. It's um, with my coaches here at Michigan. They have it locked away in a safe. Um, yeah, they have it with them secured. Okay, good move. Good move. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, we have a couple quick questions to get you out of there, sort of non-sports questions. Um, you uh -huh. told me that two of your favorite restaurants are Burl's Pepper Pot in your hometown of Pickering, and the Black mm. Rock Bar and Grill in Ann Arbor. If you could choose only one of those to eat at, what would be your choice? Oh, I didn't prepare <laughs> for this question. Um, I'd have to go with, oh, I'd have to go with Burl's Pepper Pot just because okay. it's, um, it's Black owned. It's um, food that they prepare is food that I grew up on. Um, Jamaica, so, Jamaica, yeah. Right? Jamaican? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so awesome. I'd have to go with Burles. They got a name like a burger after you or something, you know? I mean, you won the gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I have my own day named after me, so I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, here's another one. What would be a more devastating soccer loss for you, losing to the United States or losing to Ohio State? Ooh. Oh, putting you on the spot here. Yeah. Um, 
she unfortunately both of those things have happened to me <laughs> um so oh that's a really hard one um you know what I'm gonna have to say Ohio State <laughs> hey, that, that, that just the rivalry is the rivalry is just as big as Canada versus U.S. I can tell you that so either one of them I'm gonna be devastated but now yeah did you, did you get to go to the uh, Michigan Ohio State football game this year oh no I didn't we actually flew back um from Florida um the same day so we came we arrived like at one o'clock in the game had already I think it was at noon or something like that or maybe one so um tickets were completely sold out just because you know people literally prepare for this event like at the start of the football season so hotels are booked up people already paid for tickets um so yeah I didn't get to um my boyfriend plays on the football team though so I got to watch it from you know at home which was really cool so that was a really cool win for us yeah and good luck to them in the playoffs coming up also that, that'll be exciting and then before you go I wanted to play one quick song for you just to get your reaction and see if you know the words to this song <laughs> it's our fight song yeah there we go that could be the best fight song in all of college sports right it is a good one it is a good one <laughs> uh, well, well thank you so much she is jade revere gold medal winner big 10 champion and the pride of pickering ontario and all of canada jade thanks so much for being on the show this has been great no thank you guys for having me i had lots of fun Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. After this break, Small Town Spotlight heads to a place where they play a version of bowling that only involves five pins. You are watching the final 2021 episode of Nick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV in St. Andrews, New Brunswick. It's time for another edition of Small Town Spotlight here on CHCO TV. Since CHCO is available on Bell Satellite throughout Canada, you can watch our show on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights if you live in Fort Providence in the Northwest Territories, St. Adele in Quebec, or Salmon Arm in British Columbia. And as always, you can watch the show on the CHCO TV YouTube channel. For our 22nd edition of Small Town Spotlight, we head to the town of Wawa in the province of Ontario. With a population of 2,905, it's the birthplace of former NHL players Chris Simon and Denny Lambert. And the town takes its name from the Ojibwe word for wild goose. And you'll soon find out why the goose is still synonymous with Wawa. To tell us more about the area from the banks of Lake Superior, let's welcome in Carla Dory. Carla, welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks for having me. All right. Let's get going to find out about the area. How long have you lived in Wawa? I've lived in Wawa for 25 years. Um, and I've always been lucky enough to live right close to the lake, like walking distance. Why don't you tell us a bit about this famous Wawa goose, like why it was created, how long ago, who paid for it? Um, okay, so the Wawa goose, it was created when they, when they connected Highway 17, like right from British Columbia all the way over to Newfoundland. And it was created to attract people to want to take the little merge off the highway to go into the town um so you know so, like a draw and I think that was in 1967 I think anyway okay. immaterial that part um and the all the people from the town of Wawa 
chipped in and got this goose made. It, I think the first one was made um, by a gentleman from Algoma Steel um, because Algoma Ore is actually part of Wawa back then. Um, and yeah, so that gentleman, he made it at the Algoma Steel and they resurrected it. And I think we're on our third or fourth goose now. We just got a new goose like maybe two years ago. Um, and the town, like the town actually chipped in again for the a new goose. Okay, great. And I see, I've seen it says it's 28 feet tall and has a wingspan of 20 feet. Um, if someone had say 48 hours to spend in Wawa, what would be a few things you'd recommend they do? I would recommend that um, for like, cause it's only 48 hours, go to Sandy beach. Um, it's like a really nice beach to go to. It's quiet. It's serene. Um, beautiful water. It's right on Lake Superior. Um, and yeah, you can go there with your family, have a little picnic. There's actually even, um, oh, a, a pavilion down there. And it has a lot of Everywhere in Wawa, they have like little signage set up and, and it gives history of the area. Um, Wawa's, yeah, pretty, a pretty historical area. If you go and start reading all of their history things. <laughs> okay. you, also, um, you mentioned something about the general store there. Yes, we have Young's General Store and it's been around since probably the 60s as well. And it was created by, oh, that's the Wawa Motor. Now, what's the deal? They have, they have a goose too. How many are there? Yes. Well, they have the goose. They took the old goose, I think, when okay. from like its original host area on the highway. So I think that they ended up taking that goose and putting it up there. But that's the Wawa Motor Hotel. Um, the Wawa General Store... Do you have another picture or that no? one I did not pop up, but that's uh yeah, I, I wasn't able to pop one up for that, but I did read about it online. That sort of got everything, huh? Yeah, it they have everything in there. They're famous for their barrel pickles. They have really cool, unique gifts. Um, the best ice cream. It's a whole experience when you go in there. It's like they have like a lot of, they're almost like- a, we, did find a, we did find a picture. There's another, everyone's got a goose, huh? Everyone has a goose. See, that's like, they're recycling the goose. Okay, <laughs> okay. so the store's got one and the restaurant's got one. There's actually uh, a moose as well at the Young's General Store. And okay. it's out of the moose. Moose and a goose. Very good. <laughs> Now, I see you've been the owner of something called the Wawa Digest for about 20 years. Give us a quick description of what exactly the Wawa Digest is. The Wawa Digest, it was developed, um, it's, it's, it's a paper that sits in the restaurant, like a little booklet that okay. it's, a, it's a quick, fun read for people when they're sitting in the restaurant or you can pick them up at the store, the gas station, it's free. Um, it has like jokes and quotes and like Sudoku trivia um, and then advertising, of course. And it does, sometimes we put some local news in. I try to stay away from the news. Um, I try to keep the digest like really fun and refreshing. And the last thing I wanted to mention to you, I've heard about a uniquely Canadian version of bowling that's called five pin bowling. Um, and there's only five pins there as opposed to the regular 10 pin. Um, have you ever done that? Yes, I have. We used, well, before COVID, um, we used to go to cosmic bowling, like where you don't, do, there's actual leagues and stuff set up and it's really popular. Um, a lot of people do it all the time. But we usually go on Saturday night. It's like what they call cosmic bowling. And it's, okay, yep. they have like disco lights and music. But the five pin bowling is a smaller bowling ball. It, 
doesn't have holes in it or anything. It's like shooting a baseball or a bocce ball, I guess. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I noticed, I looked it up. The scoring system is different. It's five points for the top pin and then three pin, three points for the pins to the either side of the top one and two for the pins on the far end. So you can get 15 per frame. I'm thinking yes. Okay. Okay. I've never, never heard of that before. Um, but it sounds interesting nonetheless. Um, well, that's like I said, it certainly sounds like there's just a heck of a lot to do in the area. And we're going to put some things up on the screen for our viewers. You can find out more about the town of Wawa by going online to www.wawa.cc. And you can find more about Carla's Wawa Digest by going to their website and Facebook pages, which we will show those on the screen. And Carla, if you ever head to the U.S. and make it down to New York way, stop into Connecticut. And as I tell our guests, I'll treat you to some of our world famous thin crust pizza in New Haven. And then maybe we can go 10 pin bowling. That, that sounds like a really good plan. <laughs> Let's hope cross the border soon. <laughs> That's it. That's it. She is Carla Dory, owner of the Wawa Digest. Carla, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I have that exact same t-shirt. Mine does not fit as well as yours anymore, though. <laughs> Seven-year-old basketball camp t-shirt and shameless wow. plug. The camp will hopefully be back this year on August 3rd, 4th, and 5th. So uh, here's, here's the hoping. There we go. Uh, great interview with Jade. She is one, uh, one smooth, yeah. smooth uh, interview there. She did a great job. Um, and as we mentioned, she is from Pickering. And you know who else is from Pickering? I looked up. Mr. Dre Mr. Dress Up. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's from Pickering. Nice. Oh, man. Um, and in the Small Town Spotlight interview in regards to the town of Wawa, I thought the town was named after Charlie Brown's teacher. Ooh, they never say her name. Yeah. Uh, wah, wah. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the year, humor just there's not much left in the uh, in the tank by the end of the year. All right, what was in that eggnog? <laughs> All right, who do you have for shout outs? I'm gonna I'm gonna go pretty basic on this one. Uh, just gonna give out some some holiday greetings to anyone who was on our show over the past year. I hope everyone has a great holiday. And thank you for giving your time to us. We really do appreciate it. Well, that is it for episode 30, our last episode of 2021 here at McEntee Sports Report. I'm Joe in New Haven. And I'm Evan here in New Brunswick. Thanks to CHCO TV station manager Patrick Watt and editor Flo Rida Mitchell. <laughs> oh, going way back. Uh, Patrick and Flo do an amazing job of producing and editing a show it gets a larger TV audience than any of the New Year's Eve shows from Times Square. That's what I've, that's what I've heard. And now that we've once again come to the end of another show, that means it's time for our closing catchphrase. So to end off 2021, let's simply go with peace, love, and old Lang Syne. And as we roll the credits, we will play you out to a great version of that song, by a singer from Scotland named Dougie McLean. So here's to a great 2022. Evan, have a great year. You too, sir. Cheers. There you go. This is Mick and T Sports Report on CHCO TV. We'll see you next time. And never brought a mind. Should all the acquaintance and days of all my sign for all land sign my dear for all land sign we'll tack a cup